What's up resellers? I'm Rebecca and you're watching Rebecca the reseller. Thanks for joining me today for another thread up video. Now I'm going to attempt to do this. I don't know if this is actually going to work. I tried to plan it out in my head before I did this, but for some reason I just couldn't wrap my head around. <laughs> so what I want to do with this video is a thread up from start to finish video. And so that does require me actually like showing you physical things and then doing things on the computer and screen sharing. And I just can't get it together as far as editing videos right now. It's just above my head. And so at some point I'm going to get really good at merging edited videos or editing videos that are from my computer screen where I screen share and things that I take with my phone. There's a way to do it. People do it, but I don't know how to do it and I don't have time to figure it out. So it's like, whatever. Um, so thanks for bearing with me. You guys know I'm not super tech savvy, so I appreciate you bearing with me and I hope that the information that I give is valuable, even if it's in a little bit of a mess kind of thing. So Thread up start to finish. Right now, what I did is just went on because I didn't want to show you like my address and everything is I went onto the thread up website and I requested a label so that I can show you what I'm doing. Usually that's like the third step that I do, but I did it first so that way I could show you what I'm doing. If you've never done that before, um, basically you go to the thread up website, you click on sell, you scroll down, you say get my clean out kit and you select what you want to do. Um, now for whatever reason, people have trouble getting labels. I don't know what's going on. I can get labels. I haven't had a problem with it. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Um, so I've been doing a couple a week and it's working for me. If you can't get them, just keep trying. And when you can, do. Um, so it does say that they're having longer than whatever time to process. It doesn't matter for me because I do select the $10.99 for return my items and the $16 week, one week processing, which I have so far been very happy with. So it does cost me $26.99 to send in a thread up box. And I hope that I will not only at least make that $26.99, but I will then profit beyond my cost of goods and the $26.99 after the payouts that they give me. And so far so good with that process. Um, so I select those things and then I go ahead and get the label. You click like two or three prompts and it generates the label for you. And I'm gonna close this so that I don't get confused. And so this is what my label looks like. So I have a bag number assigned to it. I have the label ready to print out. Um, and so we will go back to this. You can do your label first, you can do your label last, whatever, but I just wanted to at least show you that part first. Um, now I have done separate videos with explaining my spreadsheet. So I'm not gonna go into explaining the entire spreadsheet here. What I'm gonna do is show you what I do with my process. And that basically starts with, I get my items together. I usually put them in this bin here of everything you know throughout the week that I want to send to thread up. And I just throw them in this bin and it stays next to my desk. And that way, if there's multiple thrifting trips, if I pull stuff out of my Poshmark closet, you know, I go through my own closet, whatever, I can just throw everything in one bin. And I know that that's going to be what I send the thread up that week. Now, for me, I've since taken most of my thrifted items off of Poshmark. I have, I'm not really going to thrift stores anymore. <laughs> so pretty much I'm just ordering things, getting them shipped to me, and then I'm putting them in the, my thread up bin and sorting them through. Um, so my process is a little more simple. If you're going to a variety of thrift stores, you're putting things on Poshmark, you're putting things in ThreadUp, you're doing a lot of different things. I think having a bin dedicated to ThreadUp is a good starting point so that you can just throw everything in there as it comes. And then when you're ready to sit down and process your ThreadUp box, you can. And for me, I do it once a week on a Monday. I have a, I don't know when this is all going to happen, the order of the videos, but I do have a reseller schedule video where I share exactly how I get everything done and what days I do things and how I kind of split it up. So check out that video if you're curious about how I only work on thread up once a week or only do whatever. So I put everything in the bin. When I'm ready to sit down, I open up my spreadsheet. And again, there's a separate video just on my spreadsheet completely, and it is available for purchase in my Etsy store. Check out the link down below. You can buy from start to finish the entire spreadsheet and use it yourself from day one. Um, so what I do is I start by seeing where I left off. 
and I have an IB, an internal box number. I like to track it by an internal box number as well as the thread up box number so that I know how many boxes I've sent in. So this one that I'm working on right now is my 55th box. <laughs> 55 boxes going to thread up. Um, and I started in March, end of March. It's mid uh, August now. So in about five months, I've done 55 boxes. I guess that makes sense. 11 boxes a month, give or take. So that's good. Anywho, so I input all of my information. This is not only going to be my master record, it's also going to turn into my packing list, which I send in to thread up with my box. So it serves two purposes. And again, check out that spreadsheet video for all of the particulars. But what I do is I just get a box and I've used several different kinds of boxes. Right now, this is a Home Depot large size box, which I find a little too big. I don't know what a Home Depot medium size box looks like. I had a neighbor that was getting rid of all their moving boxes and I snagged them all. So I've had these Home Depot large boxes for a while, but I've reused Amazon boxes. I've reused, we get grass-fed meat shipped to us. <laughs> and I've reused that box because it comes all insulated. So it's not like there's meat juice all over the box. So I've used grass-fed meat box. <laughs> I've used any kind of box. Um, I also really like when you order, sorry, you see my messy back here, but when you order, I order five packs of these padded flat rates from USPS, five, 15 packs. They come in a big brown box. I've shown it before on my thread up tips video. That is a really good box as well to use for thread up. So there's a lot of different boxes that you can use. Um, but I like reusing that one I get from the USPS. It's like the perfect size. Um, this, like I said, the Home Depot box that I'm using right now is a little big. But so I have it off to the side. And so all I do is I take my bin, put it next to the desk. I take my box, put it next to the desk, and I just pick up an item, enter in the information, put it in the box. I used to fold everything nicely. I've stopped because let's face it, it's gonna get thrown around, jostled around, moved around. And I really stopped when the box was too big and I realized they're not gonna stay this way. They're gonna get all moved around. So I just throw them in the box now. I mean, I, you know, I try to like kinda do like this, but I pretty much just throw it in the box. Don't waste your time making it pretty. It's not gonna end up like that um, when it gets there. So I take the item, I enter whether it's new or used, the brand, what it is, the item type, the size, the color. I used to enter if it was Lux or not Lux. Now I don't need to do that because the Lux program is on hold. The retail value, I used to enter this religiously. I'm holding off right now to see if I can save time on my thread up box processing. I may go back to it if I feel like I need to. If you purchase the spreadsheet, which again, that's in a separate spreadsheet video, um, and there's a link down below, I go into a little bit more about that. Um, but so I just go through and I enter as many items as I feel like would take up 30 pounds <laughs> because it's a 30 pound max to send in your box and I want to put it as much up to the limit. Another reason why you don't want a bigger box is because you don't want to waste the weight on a box. You want to put items in to get more for the money that you're paying for that $26.99. So I really do try to get like 30 plus items in a box. I really would like it to be more like 40 or 50 items, but now that it's winter time, there's more bulky items. It is what it is. Let's see how many items that I just entered all of these in. Some 35. So this is 35 items in here. This is pretty good. And um, what I do is I weigh it. Now, I'm in the process of hunting for the best scale for thread up because I have a scale. It's the Accutech. Is it Accutech? It's this scale. And I've highly recommended it up until now. <laughs> because and, and it is good and I do like it. And if you're selling on Poshmark or eBay or Mercari and you need it to weigh a poly mailer or a small box, it's perfect. But to weigh a large box, it can do it. I'm doing it. It's kind of a pain in the neck. I'd like for it to be an easier process. When you do this, um, because it does have a hold feature, you just put this on the floor, put the box on top. As long as you can stick your finger underneath the box, even though you can't see the readout, you press this hold button, it will keep the weight. And then you can lift the box off 
see what it says. So I know that this says 28.8 pounds. That's how much it was when the box was on here. It held the weight readout. So this will do the trick. It is up to a 50 pound max. So this will work. I just think that there's probably a perfect thread up scale out there. I'm gonna search for it and then I'll recommend it to you. <laughs> like one with a bigger surface area that's maybe more flat is what I'm kind of thinking. Um, but this does work. And the smaller your box or more compact the box, the better that scale is for it. When you have this big giant one or like a big Amazon one, that's why you know it, it's a little less easy to deal with. That was a whole scale rant. I was not planning on that. <laughs> so I enter every single item. So as you can see, I wasn't going to bore you with literally entering everything in, but I entered them all in. I entered if it was new or used, the brand, the item, the size, the you know color, or if it was floral, whatever, just some way to identify it. And a little pro tip, if you have a lot of one brand and perhaps even multiple sizes of that brand or the same color of that brand, and you're trying to like add these things up later and search for them and reconcile the items, you may want to spread them out into different boxes. So like sometimes if I get a lot of Chico's items, I don't wanna put five different black Chico's tops in the same box. Cause then I would have to look up the size and figure out exactly which one is which to know what sold and what didn't sell or what was accepted and what was rejected. So I try to space them out into different boxes if I can so that it's easy on the reconciling side later. Um, so I enter everything in, I throw it in the box, literally, <laughs> and then I take everything here and I will add in the um, box number. So I'll go to my label or I'll request the label at this time. We already did this step, but hello. I will copy this. I will enter it here and then copy it again. And I will enter it all the way down so that it's just there next to each one, nice and easy. And then I'm gonna copy the whole thing. Now you could just select this and print this if you wanted, but what I like to do for my packing list so I like to put it in my template. And I put it here because then I can just easily print this off. So I'm going to update the bag number here. Um, I have my account, I have my name, and I'm gonna see how many items I have, which I think it was 35, 35 items. So that would automatically go in there and that's it, oh, and it's internal box 55. And so I'm gonna print this. Uh, I have to move me. Current sheet, it's all on there. Okay, so I'm gonna print this off. So that's going to, I don't want you, you know, hold on. I don't want you to go to my Dymo. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to print that. I'm going to print my label. Now there are two pages in the label. So I always go to custom just so as not to waste paper and just print the first page because I don't need that second page. It's like how to clean stains and all this stuff and whatever. I don't need that. Okay, so now I've got my packing list and this is going to go in the box and I'm going to tape up the box. I have rolls and rolls and rolls of my eBay tape left. So I use this free tape. <laughs> um, someday I'm going to have to pay for tape, but right now I'm looking at it and I've got at least like 10 rolls still left and I haven't been on eBay in a long time. Um, so I'll pack up the box with the packing slip in it. Yes, I have taped up the box several times with forgetting to put the packing slip in. So I gotta untape the box, put the packing slip in there and do it all over again. Then I take this label, I fold it up. I use one of these pockets from USPS. 
and I'll put this on the outside. Right now I'm not gonna waste time actually taping up the box, but I'll put this on the outside and I will drop it off to a Walgreens. I have a Walgreens just a mile down the road. And in, even though I have USPS come and do pickups from my house and the USPS can pick this up, it takes about an extra week I've noticed um, in processing time. And so the USPS will get it to FedEx within a week and then FedEx will get it to thread up in whatever period of time. So if you save it and go straight to a FedEx location or go straight to a Walgreens, which is a FedEx pickup location, then it goes faster to thread up, then thread up processes it and whatever. So once the box gets there, and um, they tell me it's been received. I get my 500 points, which I love. And then it still takes some time to get processed. When it gets processed, that's when I will go ahead and do some additional updating. Now, again, I did a separate spreadsheet video where I explain this full spreadsheet, but I'm just gonna tell you here for the purpose, for the purpose, just distracting, for the purpose of the process is I will update this with my kit number, and everything um, that goes along here. And I will um, put the completed date, which is the process date. I will put a link to that kit. And again, check out that other video for all the information. This will populate the rest of my dates, which is my price dropping strategy. And so every day I go into this spreadsheet and I will look and see if there's anything for me to do. Again, go check out that other video about how the spreadsheet works and how I use it. But I will check this spreadsheet and if there is price dropping for me to do by these dates over here um, in the red area, if there's price dropping for me to do, which I usually do about every two weeks, then I will price drop items, I will reclaim items, I will do whatever tasks I need to do to be checking on all of my kits. I think that's the biggest thing with ThreadUp is that there's a lot of checking that you need to do, make sure that you don't miss any items, make sure that they don't get back into ThreadUp's property and not be reclaimed by you. So like for today's purpose, today's the 11th, so I'm gonna go into August 11th here. So that's telling me that I have some reclaiming to do because these items are 55 days old. So I'm going to click on, where is my, here we go. Um, I'm going to click on here. So, so just, I kind of skipped ahead. So that's me once a week sending off the boxes. Once you send off the box, there really isn't anything else for you to do with that box until it gets processed. But on a daily basis, I'm always doing something for ThreadUp, like checking these things. I'm checking my kits from my spreadsheet to see, do I need to price drop anything? And do I need to reclaim anything? If I have to price drop it, I go into the kit and I price drop it based on my price dropping strategy. And if I have reclaims, I will reclaim them and get that all set up. And if you're wondering about the reclaim process, I have a separate video all about the reclaim process that goes into detail about how I handle that. So on a daily basis, I'm really just doing checks. And then once a week, I'm processing the box. So price dropping, reclaiming, perhaps on a daily basis, I'm checking for those activities. And then once a week on a Monday, I'm processing my box and sending it in. And when I'm doing my daily checks, I'm just going to go in like here, this Calvin Klein dress, it needs to be reclaimed soon. It only has six days to sell. So I would be going in and again, check that separate video for the reclaim process, but I would be clicking on reclaim, creating a little reclaim, reclaim bundle and getting that processed back to me. Um, so that's kind of my daily thing. Now back to once a week, I do go in and check my emails for what's sold and I update my master spreadsheet for sales. And so again, if you wanna know more about the spreadsheet, um, you wanna go and watch that video, which is the spreadsheet video. And if you wanna purchase the spreadsheet, click the link down below to purchase the spreadsheet so you don't have to make your own, but of course you can clearly make your own. So on a, on a month, no, weekly basis after I, process my box, then I go into my email. Sometimes I do it on my phone, sometimes I do it on the computer. I go to the Gmail account that I have associated with my ThreadUp account, and I go to that particular, I just wanna pull it up. Um, pull it up and I search for sold. 
and it's gonna pull up all the emails from ThreadUp that say your item has sold or your Lux item has sold. It's not gonna send, show me any of the other emails. So it's just gonna show me the ThreadUp emails that say something has sold. So I'm gonna click into this. This is from yesterday. And this is, you're probably not gonna be able to see. I don't wanna pull it up on things I don't wanna show all my emails. But on here, this is just the ThreadUp confirmation email that shows that something has sold and that you have gotten your payout. Because if it shows sold on the website, that doesn't mean you've gotten your payout yet. And I only record it on my spreadsheet when the payout is in my account. So these are ones that are definitely done. The return window has passed. I definitely got paid for them. So this is a pair of Talbot's jeans, size 16 petite. Um, my payout was $35.57. Yes, please. So what I'll do is I'll click Control F and I will search for the item. It does tell you in the email what bag it's from. And because I send in the same brand over and over again, that's usually how I find the item. So the bag ends in 59A. So I'm gonna type in that. That's gonna find me the bag. So this is, this is the bag or the bin or the box or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and so now I'm gonna look for Talbot's jeans. Here we go, Talbot's jeans. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I type in sold, type in 3557, and I type in the date, which was yesterday, which was the 10th. So that's how I record my sales. So again, daily, I'm going in and seeing if I need to drop prices, and I'm dropping them. Daily, I'm going in to see if I need to reclaim anything, and I'm reclaiming when needed. Once a week, I'm processing my boxes and sending them in and recording everything on my spreadsheet, printing out my label, packing and sending the box. And once a week, I am recording the sales from the prior week. So I just go through my emails, find all the emails that I haven't gotten to yet, an update that the item has sold on the spreadsheet, and that's it. Um, I mean, up until this point for the last five months, this is what I've done. Once a week, send in the boxes. Once a week, update my sales on a daily basis according to my spreadsheet per the system that I've set up. Drop prices, reclaim items, and that's it. So, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> like, I don't want to, like, jinx myself, but I mean, I can do thread up in probably less than five hours a week, maybe. I usually send in about two or three boxes a week. It takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to process a box. By the time I type everything in and pack up the box, 20 or 30 minutes per box. In the morning, I spend about 10 minutes every day checking to see if I need to do any price drops or reclaims, and that takes about 10, 15 minutes per day. And then once a week, I go in and update my sales. Hopefully you have a lot of sales and the updating takes longer, but that doesn't take more than an hour. So I mean, I think in five hours or less, I can run my thread up business. Um, now, that is not including sourcing. Sourcing for me right now takes place completely online. Sometimes I buy things one off on Poshmark or ThreadUp itself or Swap.com or any other place I can find it, retail arbitrage or whatever. And sometimes it's me purchasing liquidation or um, bulk pre-owned items or things like that. So that's not going to count the sourcing time, but I'd be doing that sourcing time for Poshmark or whatever anyway. Um, and honestly, that doesn't take me very long either. I mean, I've kind of gotten that down to a science where I can order my bulk pre-owned items very quickly once a week. And um, when I have time, that's when I go on to like swap.com when they're having a sale or when I go on to Poshmark because I just feel like shopping, you know, and buy some things. You know, sometimes I like things and I go back and find them later. When I have a lot of points on ThreadUp, that's when I'll shop on ThreadUp and get items to sell with my points. So the ThreadUp process is very minimal. Like for the amount that I'm spending on it, I think I'm making a great income. Now, I will say it's varied and I've done several, if you haven't seen any of them, um, if this is the first time you're finding me, sorry, this might be a little boring, but I've done a few payout 
you know, videos. I'm going to do more. It's just lately time has been tough. So I've got some more payout videos coming. I've done some payout videos um, on how sales have been going and all of that. So I, I won't say that ThreadUp is making me as much money as Poshmark used to, but it's getting close. So I feel like I'm clearing about anywhere between $900 and $1,200 right now, the last few months, like that is my payout. Um, and so, you know, then you have to take into cost of goods and all my other expenses or whatever. So that's good. It's not great, but it's good considering I'm only doing five hours of work a week. Um, so I need to just grow my inventory, grow the amount of things that I have coming and going in and out and kind of learn the nuances of the platform more. But I feel like the time investment, I was just getting really curious as to like how much time from start to finish am I actually spending on thread up? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Does it make sense? Is it worth it? I think it takes about three months to get fully up to speed where you're finally getting daily payouts from items that have sold previously. Cause it takes a month for the items to get into Poshmark, uh, to thread up. And then it takes them to sell and then the return window has to pass and then you get your payout. So that whole process, I felt like took about three months before every day, every other day, I was kind of getting consistent payouts. And now that's happening on a daily basis. I've got my system, you know, in place. And so for five hours or less, I spend on thread up you know, I'm doing about $1,200 on the high end right now. I think that's going to grow. And I think I can work on my cost of goods a little bit more and get better, faster selling items for thread up specifically going here soon. I feel like I can fine tune that process even more. And when I get that, I will share that with you. Um, but so for those of us that have found ourselves during the pandemic needing to be homeschool moms <laughs> or just things are harder to get, it's harder to do Poshmark, or you just want a little bit of freedom from the daily grind of Poshmark and eBay and Mercari or what have you, ThreadUp is a really viable option. I do think that more and more people are getting on it. Maybe it's going to be harder to sell things. Maybe you're going to get less for them, like with every platform. But I think for the time trade-off, I'm starting to really see the benefits of it. And especially because recently I've had to start homeschooling Geo and I can't devote all the time and effort and energy as I used to to my reselling business. This has become a really freeing way to still make some money um, and still be involved in the reselling community and thrifting and all of that. That seems very manageable. Um, so I hope that this was helpful to you and kind of just showing you my start to finish process. If you have questions though, I'd love to do like a thread up Q and A video soon. So leave any questions you have down in the comments below. That might be something that we can work out here soon. Um, so like this video on your way out so YouTube can tell other resellers about it. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so we can hang out again. And if you are a subscriber, Thank you so much for coming back. It does mean a lot. It really does. Um, and leave me a comment down below and say hi so I can say hi back. So thanks so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.